hell? Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Alrighty, folks, we are live right here on Monday evening, April 29, 2019. This is the Grim Leftovers Show. I am your host, Grimner. We're live on reallibertymedia.com and also on rlmradio.xyz and on TuneIn and on Internet Radio and on Spreaker and over there on freedomsnetwork.com and... <laughs> Did I mention RLM Radio XYZ? Uh, dot XYZ? Yeah, I think I did. And re- RealLiberty.org. Oh, all kinds of spots. We're live. We're out there. And uh, I'm ready to do a show. Hopefully you're all ready to hear one. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Let's see what if we got some people tuned in tonight. I'm going to check my, my little uh, thingy here. My thingy. That's a technical term for those of you unaware. <laughs> I have a little page over here that shows me how many people tuned in. So yeah, we got we got some listeners. Vin E says go for Grim, which would be me. That's uh, short Grim 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 there. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, welcome to everybody over here in the RLM uh, uh, Real Liberty Media chat room. I should say not RLM because if you're looking for it, if you go to irc.freenode.net and you're looking for the chat room, it's pound a pound of Real Liberty Media. So that's where you'll find all the great folks that join us here. Well, they're just part of the part of the the, the crowd that hangs out over here. Uh, I I would say they join us here, but most of them are, they're just here, and uh, they're good friends. We're all good friends over there, and we got, got a nice group that we always have hanging around with us. So uh, come on over, say hi, talk to the people, be part of this chat, be part of the show, be part of Real Liberty Media. Now, I'm trying a little, something a little bit different over there on the Spreaker tonight because um, what I've found is that if if you sign up for the uh, iTunes, not iTunes, the other one, um, ah, whatever, the other one, one of the other ones, the big ones out there, <laughs> that Spreaker lets you sign up for, uh, if you do your show in, in uh, the normal way, it'll automatically be sent off there to share before you've set it all up, before you've done your blog. So if I set it to private, I don't know if that affects people going to try and listen to it there on Spreaker while it's live or not, but I know it will prevent what I want. It will, at least I've been told it will prevent what I want it to prevent. So uh, anyway, hi and howdy to the folks here. I see chatting in the chat. We got... Vinny, and we got Rob Works, we got Beetle. I assume Miss Kate's around somewhere. There could be other folks in there. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, Frumpy's here checking us out. Um, maybe people in other channels. We get people in other channels here at IRC, too, did as well. So, uh, howdy to y'all. Uh, and all the rest that I didn't mention, there's a long list of people there that normally I, I, I'll run through and mention them, but they know who they are. <laughs> And if you come over here, you'll know who they are. <laughs> anyway, let's get to it. I got a lot of stories lined up, and uh, my my eyes have been a little out of focus for the last oh, four or five days. I'm not sure why. It's like they're producing extra sand or something. I I I, I you know it's um it's strange, but uh, so so whatever happens, it it kind of makes them dry and icky and I, and I, and out of focus. So, anyway, um, I've been dealing with that, but here we go. All right, we're starting off today on Alien-UFO-Sightings is the name of the site. Uh, (laughs) It's a good site. Uh, You know, you may not enjoy it too much, but uh, no, you will enjoy it. If you go to that site, you'll enjoy it. Anyway, scientists have created a Star Trek-like plane that flies using ion thrusters. And no fuel. That's right. Scientists have taken a major step towards creating an aircraft of the future. One powered by an ion drive rather than using moving parts and fuel like conventional aircraft. In a paper published today, whatever day was was this? Uh, November 23rd, 2018. So that was the today they're talking about. In a paper published today in Nature... A team led by Stephen Barrett 
from MIT described how they created a so-called electro-aerodynamic powered plane, one that uses solid state propulsion, meaning no propellers or jet engines with expendable fuel. The future of flight should be things or should not be things with propellers and turbines, Barrett says. Uh, it should be more like what you see in Star Trek, with a kind of blue glow and something that silently glides through the air. This breakthrough has not been possible before because our technology simply was not advanced enough. As far back as 1921, scientists have been unsuccessful in trying to develop something similar once mistaken for anti-gravity technology, but now the team says the key technology advances have enabled this to happen. In their tests from 2016 through 2018, they created an aircraft with a wingspan of 5 meters, about 16 feet, that weighed 2.45 kilograms, 5.4 pounds. It has a number of thin electrodes running across its wings, and at the front of these are thin wires, while at the back is an aerofoil, a curved surface to promote the lift, uh, like on a regular plane wing. The thin wires on the front are charged to a positive 20,000 volts, while the aerofoil at the back is charged to a negative 20,000 volts, creating a strong electric field. At the front, electrons are removed, as they do when that happens, from nitrogen molecules uh, in the air to produce ions, and as these accelerate to the back, they produce an ionic wind, which gives the plane thrust. The basic idea is that if you ionize air, which means removing an electron from it, you can accelerate the air with an electric field, like the force you get uh, if you rub a balloon on your head. Well, that's static electricity, yeah. Over the course of 10 flights, the plane successfully flew about 60 meters uh, in, in about 12 seconds in a gym that, uh, the, that the team hired to use uh, with a thrust efficiency of about 2.6%, but as speed increases, the efficiency of the system also increases, just like in a regular plane. Theoretically, at 670 miles per hour, uh, uh, faster than a passenger jet, it is 50% efficient. The technology is similar to how ion engines are used in some spacecraft to travel through space. Uh, there are some significant similarities, said Barrett. However, those spacecraft rely on ionizing a fuel, such as a xenon gas, to produce thrust. The plane developed by MIT does not require propellant, instead relying only on the thin wires and, and an on and off the shelf lithium uh, polymer battery. Uh, at the moment, the technology is uh, limited, with the plane being very much a prototype and small, tiny. But, but the future possibilities are hugely exciting. In the near to term, uh, this thrust system could be used to power small drones, making them near silent as they wouldn't have any propellers like regular drones. I, I don't yet know whether you'll see any large aircraft carrying people anytime soon, but obviously I'd be very excited if that were the case, says Barrett in the video, which is provided here in uh, this post. So uh, you might want to check this out. There, like I said, there's a video in there. Uh, what's going on here? Copy. Uh, and and um, let's see what we're talking about here. Uh, oh, uh, uh Calm and clear skies. They're talking about some uh, radar image there, weather stuff. So not discussing what I'm talking about. All right. <laughs> All right. We have another story here uh, from the very same alien-ufo-sightings.com. This story, even older, but, but it still holds up and is uh, good and useful for today. October 15th, 2017. 43 freaky facts about conspiracy theories. Yep. A conspiracy theory is the belief that an organization is secretly responsible for an event. Sometimes these theories end up being true, 
But the vast majority of the time, according to this anyway, they're totally fictional. I think they're more are that are true than wind up being fictional. But um, this is this guy's article. Who, who wrote this? Is there a name up here? Um, there is not. It just says by alien UFO sightings. Okay. Uh, here at Factinate, we aren't claiming to believe in any of these. We're just bringing you the good gossip. So here's a list of some of these theories. Poisoned by the CIA. Yeah, man, it, it'd be true. Bob Marley, the famous reggae musician, died of cancer. It started in his foot and it spread all the way up to his brain. However, despite the fact that he was already dying, there was an assassination against his life, assassination attempt, it should say there, they guess they forget that word, uh, against his life one year before he died. A group of men broke into his house and tried to shoot him. That's not even the conspiracy. That's real fact. The conspiracy starts with the fact that one of his attempted killers was indeed a CIA agent. Was this agent just a crazy guy gone rogue? Or was he working on a mission directed by his bosses at the CIA? Some people believe the United States government, wimps pussies that they are, were afraid of Marley's political power over the African-American community, and that cancer was simply taking too long to kill him. So they just poisoned his ass. Yeah. Uh, then we got the flat earth theory. I've co covered that enough. We'll pass that. Uh, then we got the royal family killed Princess Diana, and I think that's been covered too heavily, so I'll pass on that. Um, this one's a little bit interesting here. Jesus and Mary Magdalene got married, so do with that what you will. <laughs> um, this one is talking about some person named Lord Lordy, Lord L-O-R-D-E, uh, is lying about her age. So, um, uh, I, I guess they think she's older than she is. I, I, I don't know. Who is she? She's some girl, brunette girl there. All right. All right. Um, okay. Superhumans of MK Ultra. This is another conspiracy that has roots in truth. Oh, no, it's totally true. It's absolutely, it's 100% true. From the 1950s to the 1970s and on to today, thank you very much for not admit, uh, saying that part, the United States government is conducting experiments on human beings. Their goal is to use mind control to create sleeper agents or assassins who, had no, who have no idea that they are sent out to kill people at the, uh, I'd say government, but uh, somewhere in there, at their behest. Uh, they are given LSD or some other similar form of drug and essentially tortured. When they are found out, they begin to destroy all of their documents, which it doesn't matter. They've got copies and other places, and so they can carry on wherever. Um, uh, this is where the rumors began. The CIA was also known for studying people with alleged psychic powers or with real psychic powers, for that matter. Uh, the experiments conducted on the young girl, Eleven, from the TV show Stranger Things, um, okay, uh, seems to be inspired by MK Ultra. Probably is. It's probably a direct, direct true story. Um, I, I think I saw some of that when I had Netflix back in the day, but I don't have that any longer. So, uh, anyway, there's that. And they got a picture here of the guy, clockwork orange guy with the thing on his head, his eyes pried open. <laughs> How about this one? The Megan Fox clone army. If you got a, a, bunch, a clone army of Megan Foxes, send a couple over. Uh, anyway, over the years, Megan Fox has looked a little bit different. It could be because of aging, plastic surgery, makeup, style, weight loss. Or she might be a clone. One conspiracy theory believes that there is no real Megan Fox. She's just a series of perfect-looking clones that end up slightly different each time. 
all right, I, 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 can can I order some of these? I, you know, if you're just mass producing Megan Foxes. <laughs> All right, Operation Northwoods. Uh, there is a conspiracy that actually turned out to be true. What do you mean actually? Of course it turned out to be true. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Joint Chief of Staff plotted a fake Cuban bombing in order to get America's support for a war against Cuba. Fail. Big fail. Uh, President Kennedy stopped it from happening. This led to the rumors that the CIA planned to kill JFK. Uh, not, not quite a rumor. And it also gives some weight to the next rumor, which is... Terrorist attacks on 9-11 were an inside job. <laughs> some people, uh, anybody with half a brain, believes, understands, knows that the United States government not only knew about the 9-11 attacks ahead of time, but got out of the way intentionally to allow those Israelis that wanted to go ahead and, and do these things to create massive wars, un massive unending forever wars against an ideology, <laughs> against a tactic, uh, not against any actual people or country, just whoever they decided was going to be the new boogeyman. That's what happened there. Uh, others believe that it was uh, completely orchestrated by the government and that the bombs went off inside the building in order to make it fall. Well, that's because it's true. And they blamed it on the plane. And that's because it's true. So why would any president do this? Well, it had nothing to do with the president, of course. <laughs> but they say here that some believe that Bush wanted an excuse to go to war with the Middle East. Yeah, well, it wasn't Bush, but yeah, they 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 wanted a good reason to, to start that forever war that I was talking about. Um, and it says because the Bush family profits a huge amount of money, which of course they do uh, fr from oil. Uh, but if their plan was to get cheap oil, which is well, I think what they somebody said, but that obviously went totally awry. <laughs> they got they got some theory here that Hollywood actors are immortal and they show a picture of Nicolas Cage and um who's this other dude? Uh some other guy, some old actor. I, I don't know who it is. Uh oh, I'm screaming at Rome's <laughs> Anyway, so they got a picture of Nicolas Cage as if he's immortal. You would think if he was immortal, he might have been able at some point in his life to take some acting lessons. <laughs> oh, all right. The moon landing, of course. During the Cold War, the United States and Russia were in a race to see who could get to the moon first. Well, nobody did, but the United States grabbed that. Oh, I mean, that's not what it says here. Uh, Russia was winning by a long shot in the space race, and yet, somehow the United States got to, got to there first, and Neil Armstrong was the first man on the soundstage. I, I mean the, uh, the set, no, the, uh, the moon, the moon. This caused some people to believe that the United States government filmed uh, the whole thing in a studio, and that it was all fake, which, well, it was. I'm not sure what Rome's is talking about there. He says I'm speaking in a foreign language. I, I don't know. Um, and he's okay. I, I'm, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. All right. Shakespeare. All right. William Shakespeare lived during the 1600s. So not many records have been found about the man's actual life. There is a grave in England where he's supposedly buried, but it leaves doubts in some people's minds. Since theater was seen as being disgraceful at the time, some theorists believe that uh, Shakespeare was a pseudonym created by members of the aristocracy who wanted to write plays. For eyewitness accounts of the playwright, conspiracy theorists say that he must have been an actor hired to be William Shakespeare. That could be a new one on y'all. I, I, I don't know. Um... <laughs> 
in that any man outside of the nobility could have possibly written the groundbreaking plays. Now, I, I don't know how much Shakespeare all of you have read or not, but um, I, I have attempted to read various Shakespearean tales, and I just can't do it. I, I try, I try to read them, but all that stupid language that they use, it, it, it's like it makes no sense for them to talk in such prissy manner. I, 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 they say that was the fashion at the time, but I don't believe it. I, I don't. I don't believe people actually talk that way. And I, maybe the high society inbred people, but not not the actual folk, not the yous and me's down there on the street. They weren't talking like these Shakespeare morons. <laughs> Although some of the stories do have some good uh, lessons to be learned if you. Uh, go through them. But if I were you, I would take the Cliff's Notes on any of those Shakespeare stories. <laughs> the Hollow Moon Theory. Right. That's up there with the Flat Earth. But but it, the, the moon could be hollow. But according to this theory, the idea the moon is actually hollow and an ancient alien civilization lives inside of it. Why? Why would they? Why pick that moon to hollow out and live inside of? How does that make any sense? <laughs> like the moon is one giant space station. While this may sound extremely far-fetched, <laughs> there are people out there that believe they have evidence of this being true. Yeah, well, too bad, so sad. Now, this one I've heard before, and I think it, makes a possibility of sense, maybe, that Katy Perry is actually John Benet Ramsey. Uh, I'm just going to try and breeze through these unless one really grabs me. Uh, a Door to Another Dimension. Uh, apparently, there's a children's book series, a TV show, The Berenstein Bears. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, from the 90s and those have grown up to, uh, I'm not I'm not I'm, I, I, whatever Paul is dead now this is one I studied extensively in high school and um, yeah there's they, they left a bunch of clues that Paul is dead uh, we don't really know that Paul is dead but he did look different after the uh, Sgt. Pepper album um, so it's possible that he actually died but, uh, and, and the other guy, uh, well, not the other guy's name, but uh, the, the clue they left in Sergeant Pepper, the one and only Billy Shears, uh, and the, the story, A Day in His Life, or A Day in the Life, um, he blew his mind out in a car, Billy Shears, the top of his head was supposedly sheared off, um, there's, there's all kinds of clues. On the White Album, uh, Revolution Number 9, you play it backwards, Ball is dead, Ball is dead. So there's a bunch of clues. It's possible, and why not? Uh, number 27, water and flo water fluoride and mind control. Um, not necessarily mind control, dealing with fluoride, but mind dumbing down on that particular one. Plastic coffins are ready for you. Uh, this may have come from an Alex Jones movie, uh, the Endgame, Endgame movie. So uh, that, that may be where that came from. Um, they're, anyway, they're, they're going back in time there a little bit. Uh, Bigfoot, can you hear me? Um, I, I, this is they're talking about people going missing uh, in in uh, national parks. And I never heard of anybody abducted by uh, Bigfoot, but um, but he's out there. He's out there. Uh, it talks about Harp, um, which of course is officially defunct at this point in time. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they've got plenty of little harps out there going on. Um, I don't know, something about Harry Potter, I don't, I don't even bother with. The CIA and AIDS. Uh, since the disease didn't really seem to be an issue until the 80s, some people believe that the CIA created AIDS in a lab in order to get rid of undesirables. <laughs> I, I tend to, to, to think that one might be true. Whether the CIA did it or they, they hired somebody to do it. 
Uh, chemtrails are poisoning everyone. This one is absolutely freaking true. Uh, it says here, though, however, from this mainstream point of view, when planes fly, they leave behind contrails. At times, they do. Certain ones actually do that. They were around long before the chemtrails. Uh, the moisture crystallizes and form clouds uh, that, that are thin and long. Conspiracy theorists, tinfoil hatters like myself, uh, believe or understand, know that these clouds are not contrails. They are chemtrails, toxic chemicals, trying to poison people through the tailpipes. Well, not through the tailpipes, obviously, but uh, through chemtrail dispersal systems. Um, then they got something about junky Jesus, uh, which I, he says he was on shrooms. There's no junkie in shrooms. If you take shrooms every day, you're not a junkie. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, hey, there's a whole bunch of other ones in here. Let's see if there's any one that I actually want to talk about. Tupac's still alive. Uh, George Bush hired Britney Spears to distract people. Not a very good distraction. Uh, we are all in the matrix, which I think we all know is true. Yes, yes. Uh, the government in Pearl Harbor. Uh, for years, the United States did not want to join World War II. Well, the people of the United States didn't want to. The government certainly wanted to. People didn't want to get involved until Pearl Harbor happened. Theorists believe that the military actually knew the Japanese were on their way. Of course they knew they were on their way. They prompted them to be on their way. Uh, because the U.S. technology should have been more advanced than theirs and should have had the capacity to see them coming. If this is true, uh, yeah, the, the, the government, the U.S. government intentionally pissed off the Japanese so the Japanese would bomb Pearl Harbor. And then the government uh, held, did, did nothing uh, until until Pearl Harbor happened. And then they said, all right, we're, we're in, we're in. Um, all right, JFK assassination. Yeah, there's so many theories behind that one. We don't even want to go there. The reptilian elite. <laughs> uh, the reptilian elite is a conspiracy theory that all of the biggest leaders of the world are secretly a race of reptilians who are planning to control, or that are already controlling humans, to take over the world. And they already have taken over the world. Some people even claim to have seen it happen for a split second. Oh, you can see it. You can see it. Uh, when the person turns into a giant humanoid lizard and suddenly turns back again. If these people are truly seeing this, it sounds like a terrifying experience. All right, Roswell, um, Area 51, Men in Black, Holocaust Denial, Global Elite. There, there's just so many here. American Prohibition, Poison. That's not a theory. That's an absolute fact. The government actually admitted they poisoned the alcohol during Prohibition. Um the VRIL Society, I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, ancient aliens created humanity, of course they did. Uh, the Nazi bell, that's also a proven fact. Monsanto conspiracy, not a conspiracy. Um, <laughs> not a conspiracy at all, that's an actual, f well, it's, not, it's a not a conspiracy theory. There was a huge conspiracy, but it's a conspiracy fact. Of course, the Philosopher's Stone is real. That may be true. And finally, the Illuminati confirmed. So, uh, there, I, I just, I, did, I mean, it's so long. I breeze through some of that. We're, we're, I'm already halfway through my time and I've only covered two stories. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. What do I do? All right. From theguardian.co.uk. You listening over there, uh, Flash Circle? Like the I uh, this by the way, this is uh on uh April Fool's Day, yeah, uh beginning of this month. <laughs> but it's a true story. Like the eye of Sauron, Western Europe's tallest building planned for a tiny Danish town. Yep. Probably not your town. Fast fashion giant, fast fashion, is that the right words? Uh, giant bestseller set to build skyscraper headquarters in Brandle, a 7,000 person rural town, until a local company announced plans to send a 320 meter skyscraper soaring over the surrounding countryside. Most people in Denmark 
had only the haziest idea where Brandy, a town of 7,000 uh, people in rural Jutland, even was. The best-seller tower, designed by star architectural studio Dorte Mandrup, will not only be the tallest building in Denmark, uh, but, also, but, the, but the tallest in Western Europe, besting the Shard in London by a crucial 10.4 meters. It will be a landmark that places that that places Brande on the map. I don't know if it's Brande or not. It's B-R-A-N-D-E. Uh, according to Anders Krog Vodgrop, <laughs> head of construction for bestseller, after the local council voted uh, voted the project through the last month. Founded in the town back in 1975, fast fashion giant bestseller. I don't know what that is. Has reached far beyond its local origins. Its owner, Anders Hulk Palvslen, is Denmark's richest man, and like it or not, its brands Vero Moto and Jack and Jones are everywhere. Danish. What did I say? Denmark. Danish. What? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so they're going to build this big old tower there in this tiny little town. And, uh, yeah, it, it just looks... They got they got of an artist's conception here of what it's gonna look like, and you got this little rural kind of farming town there, and it's sticking up in the middle of it, this huge freaking tower. It's like totally out of place. It doesn't even make any sense for it to be there. <laughs> so, oh, I'm gonna kill that duck. <laughs> All right. So there's the story for you. All right. Adidas, the, the shoemaker, te tennis shoemaker, sports shoe, what do you call them now? I guess they're not necessarily tennis shoes, sneakers. Adidas is making 11 million shoes. Hope that's 11 million pair. Otherwise, it's just five and a half million pair. Ah, 11 million shoes out of recycled ocean plastic. So, yeah, Adidas announced they will create 11 million new shoes. Well, I guess that's better than creating used shoes. Um, using recycled plastic that has been pulled from our planet's oceans. It's morning. Another picture-perfect day by the sea. You lace up your new running shoes. Step into the crisp, bright day. You fill your lungs with air. Soon, you're at the beach, hitting your stride. You stumble. Tangled around your foot is the scourge of the coastlines and oceans. A dirty mass of single-use plastic. Washed up on dry land, bobbing in the surf. Bottles, bags, and other debris. It isn't just trashing, trashing your morning run. It's strangling the life on Earth. Doom, gloom. Ah, uh, above the waves and below. Uh, what if, in Stimply... Instead of simply kicking away the trash and grimly dragging on, uh, and millions around the world retrieved it. What if that action was part of a global campaign that infuses our deadly waste with transformational intent intention to reclaim it from the waters and return it to use in our lives? And what if those shoes on your feet were made from that very same ocean plastic. That's the visionary idea behind parlay, parley, for the oceans. And let me just stop there and, and say this to y'all. Now, it would be great if they could clean up all of that plastic that was in the ocean. And instead of continually producing more petroleum-based plastic, they made it out of hemp. Hemp makes wonderful plastics that is totally versatile and will do anything these petroleum-based plastics will do. And it's 100% biodegradable. And then you won't have to worry about this happening again, but go ahead and clean up all that crap that's in the ocean and spread around the land and get rid of it, use it up for something else, and start making your plastic out of hemp. That's my take on the matter, and I'm not going to go through the rest of that article. <laughs> but hooray for Adidas for, uh, for doing that, although I'm sure they 
um, have profit margins in their eyes as they do so. Um, I, I don't really care why, but yeah, clean that shit up and get rid of it and uh, go hemp, baby, go hemp. Um, oh, Frumpy, you don't need to post that right now while I'm I, I don't want to see that. <laughs> All right. Frumpy posted an article here in the chat. Uh, it says, uh, Sports Illustrated model makes history wearing hijab and burkini. Well, I'm guessing that's, that's not in the swimsuit issue. <laughs> I don't know. All right, all right. Here we go from futurism.com. I'll read you the headline. I'm not going to stop right after that because the headline threw me off 100%. Google ethics advisor says controlling future AI is wishful thinking. And I said, what? Google ethics? Google has ethics? They have an advisor about ethics? Google, the evil bastards that they are, say they have an ethics advisor? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, that was a little sidebar. Uh, anyway, they, he, according to this person, who I imagine is imaginary, says controlling future AI is wishful thinking, and I believe that to be true. Uh, anyway, as Google new advisor, Google's new advisory council for artificial intelligence development prepares to convene for the first time, one member has a dire warning. AI is the single most dis disruptive force that humanity has ever encountered. And my concern is that so much of the discussion that we hear about uh, it now is very incremental. Hong Kong computer scientist Dai K. Uh, told the South China Morning Post, we are near an era where people can easily produce weapons such as fleets of armed AI drones. The cat is out of the bag. Kai disagrees with the common argument that advanced AI is uh, the fourth industrial revolution. He belie believes that AI stands to be far more disruptive and dangerous than any of the past technological developments. There are people who wish that they could control technology the same way they control an element like uranium. That is totally wishful thinking, Dekai told the SCMP, which I'm not sure what that is. This is why our pri priority is to alter culture. We need to grow up as a species. <laughs> Good luck on that. Uh, ethical board. Google's AI advisory board is off to a rough start with some resignations and internal employee protests over some of the company's nominations. While Kai's warning is sure to rattle some AI advocates, it at least shows that he is taking the task seriously. And they got a link to more stuff about uh, people needing to wake up to the dangers of AI. Um, yeah, if, if the... Uh, Singularity, not if, when the singularity arrives, <laughs> kiss your ass goodbye. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right, now, I, I, this is another article, and when I read the, when I, when I read the headline, it just kind of threw me off. It was like, what the hell are they talking about? Yes, I did say easily. <laughs> I also said grim. Oh. <laughs> All right, from the New York Post here on uh, April 3rd. World's first jaguar born by artificial insemination is eaten by mom. Jaguar born by artificial insemination. Why? <laughs> why, why are they doing that? <laughs> Uh, a jaguar ate her cub, the world's first jaguar to be born by artificial insemination, just days after its birth. A team of veterinarians at the environmental organization MATA Cilar, dude, whatever, Sao Paulo, 
uh, Brazil, hailed the birth as a scientific breakthrough for the conservation of the species. The, the, there's got to be a better way than artificial insemination uh, to do that. Uh, the majestic felines are an endangered species with rapidly diminishing numbers, surviving in limited Amazonian territory where 90% of the animals are found. Uh, but the unexpected death... What's going on over here? Somebody's bop, 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 bopping at me. All right, takes that, Frumpy. I hear thunder outside. It's going gonna, it's gonna to thunder. It's going to have a rainstorm. All right, so the, the cub was born this year, February 16th, 104 days after her mother, a five-year-old... What? Oh, after the mother was inseminated. Uh, they write some people write in real, real, weird, real, real, real weird ways. Easy for me to say, I know. So she was inseminated a five year old jaguar named Bianca. Bianca Jagger? Bianca Jaguar. Ha! I get it. Anyway, um, <laughs> scientists released details of the historic project Monday on the uh, focus on uh, the little jaguar, a female, was born healthy and vigorous. And Bianca demonstrated excellent maternal care for her newborn on the first day. Unfortunately, after two days, the cub died. We don't know why we cannot say if it was killed by the mother because it was not seen on the monitors on the second day. Bianca was a first-time mother, and this may have influenced the outcome of the event. Eh, eh. The veterinary team could not conduct necropsy, because the baby was already eaten by its mother. So, the, did it die prior to it? They, they don't know uh, if it died prior to being eaten. Um, either way, well, you don't need to artificially inseminate jaguars. Just put a male and a female in there together. They'll figure it out. They have for all these thousands, many thousands of years. All right, next up, we have from Salon.com on April 4th. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. I, I hate to, to agree with anything Scientology at all. I, I, I hate to agree with it. But I can understand where they're coming from on this. Absolutely understand where they are coming from on this. Bizarre Scientology Museum blames psychiatry for the 9-11 terrorist attacks and the Holocaust. <laughs> Scientology runs a museum in L.A. that blames the entire practice of psychiatry for crimes against humanity. Yes, indeed. Raw story. Uh, oh, it's from Raw Story, but it's, it's posted on Salon. All right. Uh, the, the Church of Scientology has been running a museum in L.A. that blames that uh, psychiatry for crimes against humanity ranging from the Holocaust to the 9-11 uh, Zionist attack, uh, terrorist attacks. Let me get that straight. Uh, the Daily Beast reports that the Scientology-funded museum, which is called Psychiatry, an Industry of Death, features exhibits that include a film that warns viewers that the sinister tentacles of psychiatry are responsible for horrific tragedies everywhere you look. Absolutely, 100%, I agree with that, that statement. Psychiatry is responsible for horrific tragedies everywhere you look. In addition to the film, the Daily Beast reports that the museum goers are then treated to a dimly lit maze of exhibits with frame torture devices, belligerent wall text, video testimonies from tear-stained victims. Other exhibits posit that the 9-11 attacks were devised by a psychi psychiatrist associate of Osama bin Laden. Well, that's nonsense. That, that's total nonsense. Because we know that's not how it happened. Because <laughs> we know it was the Zionists. Uh, anyway, as a way to boost antidepressant sales. 
which I find that interesting. <laughs> the 9-11 attacks were devised uh, by a psychiatrist associate of Osama bin Laden as a way to boost antidepressant sales. <laughs> All right, while the, while the Holocaust is described as a psychiatric movement, that would cause the death of millions. <laughs> Other atrocities blamed on psychiatry include mass shootings at schools. Well, psychiatry, SSRIs, uh, MK Ultra, uh, also South African apar apartheid, segregation, and slavery. Now, I don't know if they had psychiatrists, but as far back as slavery goes thousands of years so uh yeah i'm gonna have to pass on that one um anyway psychiatry has long been a boogeyman for the church of scientology it should be a boogeyman for everyone psychiatry is insanity anyway um oh, oh yeah <laughs> yeah you know what you have to be nuts to go to a psychiatrist. But I'm bum. <laughs> All right. From Sputnik News here on, uh, is there a date on here? Uh, I guess that's uh, May 5th. I mean, April 5th. They, 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 they put their dates weird. It's 0504 2019, which I think is the 5th of April 2019. All right, but based upon the dates of where it was surrounded, I, I'm going to say that's where it was. All right. <laughs> the United States will never allow Saudi Arabia to become a nuclear power, according to Pompeo. Now, I know the United States loves going around the world and throwing its weight amongst the tiny, poor countries that really can't say or do anything. People like North Korea and Iran. But Saudi Arabia, they got a lot of money. They got a lot of motherfucking money. And they don't really care what the United States has to say about them becoming a nuclear power. Now, they're, they're good butt buddies there going on between them. So, um, they, and they don't really need nuclear weapons. Because the U.S. will give them all the weapons they want. Which has been proven time and time again. And they'll use those weapons to do nasty things. Which has been proven time and time again. So whether they never allow, which is nonsense, uh, Saudi Arabia to become a nuclear power, um, I don't think that uh, Saudi Arabia really cares. Because like they, I said, they'll just uh, call on the U.S. to come and nuke whoever they want them to nuke. But anyway, according to this article, according to the propaganda piece here, the U.S. will never allow Saudi Arabia to become a nuclear power and threaten its security and, most importantly, that of Israel. According to U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, we will never write a $150 billion check to the Saudis like hell you won't. Uh, and hand them over the capacity to threaten Israel and the U.S. with nuclear weapons. Never. Well, of course, Saudi Arabia would never threaten the U.S. with anything because the U.S. is their biggest customer. <laughs> but they'll definitely hand you over $150 billion. Uh, anyway, the $150 billion figure is a reference to an Iran nuclear agreement negotiated by or during Obama's presidency. Meanwhile, the Trumpster alleges that Iran that nuclear agreement, which provided sanctions uh, relief in return for Iran's pledge to uh, keep its nuclear program peaceful, has cost the U.S. taxpayers $150 billion. Of course, now Trump has pulled out, pretty much demolished that agreement, so Iran can go ahead and do whatever the hell it wants. Earlier this week, satellite images revealed that Saudi Arabia is nearing completion of a nuclear reactor. Well, that's for energy, idiots. 
At the same time, the United States Senators Rubio and Fernandez urged us, uh, uh, at this point, ex-Energy Secretary Rick Perry in a letter on the 2nd of April not to supply any nuclear technology to Saudi Arabia given Riyadh's troubling record, which includes the killing of Saudi journalist uh, Jamal Khashoggi, which apparently at this point in time, it just ain't no big deal anymore. They said everybody's over the whole Khashoggi thing. You could just forget about that. Wipe that out of your memories and your history books. We don't really care. We made a big deal about Khashoggi at the time because it was politically beneficial. But now it doesn't matter anymore, so just forget about the whole big deal we made over that guy. The United States lacks any framework, pact, or 123 agreement for any bilateral nuclear cooperation with Saudi Arabia. 123 agreement. <laughs> Is that what they're calling it? Uh, yet the Energy Department has already approved multiple licenses for U.S. companies to sell nuclear energy technologies, uh, and Rubio and Fernandez uh, said that such things. Uh, the situation between countries has been intense since the Trumpster announced in May last year the United States withdrawal from the nuclear agreement and the reinstatement of U.S. sanctions against Iran. Uh, the sanctions target Iran as well as anyone who chooses to continue trading with it. But wait, the U.S. trades with it. Huh, so you're going to target yourself? <laughs> oh, oh, don't, don't mention that. Don't mention that the U.S. still has trade going on with Iran. Yeah, yeah, forget that part. The U.S. move has been slammed by the remaining parties uh, to the nuclear agreement. Iran, China, Russia, France, Germany, and the UK and EU, who insist that Iran has honored the deal all along. Which, of course, they have. But that doesn't matter. The truth never matters in these kind of deals. <laughs> oh, God. All right, on the freethoughtproject.com, posted on April 6th. And they're calling them mainstream media here, but we all know it's actually the clap. They're not mainstream in, in any method whatsoever. And as far as them being media, <laughs> they're just a propaganda arm. The corporate lame-ass propaganda, not mainstream media. Uh, anyway, the clap finally admits legal hemp is the answer to dependency on big oil. After hemp was legalized nationwide in December, the CLAP is now forced to report on its benefits, including how it can directly compete with big oil. Yipper, pepper. Uh, because government is the antithesis to freedom, industrial hemp has been banned nationwide since 1937, ostensibly due to the plant's similarities to marijuana. Many have speculated that this move was also due to the fact that cannabis, eh, speculated, many have absolutely known that this move was due to the fact that cannabis is in direct competition with the pharmaceutical industry by providing a far safer alternative treatments, as well as directly competing with the petrochemical industry. Oh, then let's just not forget about textiles, food, all on and on the list goes. Anyway, however, all this changed in December after that mighty Trumpster did something huge and signed the Agricultural Improvement Act of 2018, legalizing industrial hemp on a national scale. Despite this move, law enforcement thuggery across the country continue to go after entirely legal businesses for selling the THC-free version of the cannabis plant. However, they are quickly being exposed for the tyrants that they are. Even the mainstream media, uh, the CLAP, who have long suppressed and ignored benefits of the hemp plant, are now forced to cover its benefits. In an article out in Forbes that week, titled Industrial Hemp is the Answer to Petrochemical Independency, the case is made for an environmentally friendly solution 
to the monopoly of the petrochemical industry uh, that and what it's had over fuel and plastics. As Forbes reports, our dependency on petrochemicals has proven hard to overcome, largely because these materials are as versatile as they are volatile. Uh, from fuel to plastics to textiles to paper to packaging to construction materials, cleaning supplies, petroleum-based products are critical to our industrial infrastructure as it stands today and our way of life. Because this could be Teotihuacan, the end of the world as we know it. But all this is now changing thanks to many states who choose to disobey hemp prohibition. The federal government was forced to legalize it nationally. All right, well, the article goes on for quite a bit, but uh, you all understand. I, I do believe you all understand the uh, versatility of hemp and the products, the, the things that it can be used for. So hooray for hemp, and uh, let's get that show on the road as much as totally possible. Now, I came across this story back in um, last October. But I came there was a similar story yesterday uh, about a 4-foot, 11-foot grandma that uh, didn't want to let the cops into her house to do a search without a warrant. And and they beat her up and they took her to jail. And, of course, then she, they, she sued their asses and she won. <laughs> Now, this story isn't about uh, a lawsuit uh, as much as it is cops charged with home invasion because a man asked for a warrant and they broke in without one anyway. The Fourth Amendment violations of two Detroit cops were so egregious that they were actually arrested and charged with home invasion. Yep. Uh, two Detroit police officers assigned to the department's burglary unit have been arrested and charged with home invasion after kicking in an innocent man's door and falsely arresting him after he legally refused to allow them to search his home without a warrant. According to the Detroit News, Officer Bradley Clark and Sergeant Paul Glaza were charged Friday in the 36th District Court with second degree. Why second degree? Why not first degree? home invasion, misconduct in office, malicious destruction of property under $200, and entering without a homeowner's permission in connection with the alleged incident on January 22nd. It is alleged, it is proven, it is known that the officers were part of a burglary task force and entered a home without a search warrant at the 22,550 block of Pembroke. Assistant Wayne County Prosecutor Maria Miller said in a statement, they also did not have an arrest warrant for the person they were searching for, who was not in the house. And they instead detained and arrested the homeowner. We came out here to arrest somebody. We're going to arrest somebody. You're it. The victim in the incident, a 28-year-old Tasher Cornelius, who is now considering illegal action against the department, uh, Cornelius had done nothing wrong and merely asserted his Fourth Amendment rights when the officers allegedly kicked in his door, held him at gunpoint, handcuffed him, and then falsely arrested him after they failed to find the person they were looking for. A couple cops came to my house looking for a suspect, Cornelius said. I told them that the man they were looking for was not here, but they refused to listen to what I was saying. They wanted to come into my house, and I told them, without a search warrant, you have no right to be here. Well, I guess that pissed them off, he said. I shut the door on them, but they didn't leave my property. They seemed convinced that their suspect was here, so they kicked in the door like the jackboots they are and came in with their weapons drawn, and they put me in handcuffs and searched the property. They didn't find the guy. They were pissed off, and they arrested me and threw me in jail, and I'm going to sue their asses. <laughs> all right, all right. All righty then. <laughs> oh, look at that. Vin E. has a, uh article um, that he wrote, apparently. I don't know. It looks like he wrote it. Rise of the Indigo WordPress. Uh, hemp and Cannabis Can Save the World. Excellent, Vinny. I'll be checking that out later on. 
Um, okay, thanks everybody for tuning in. That'll be the end of the show. Uh, I'll be back again next Monday with episode 21. By the way, this was episode 20. <laughs> Did I mention that at the top? I don't know. Uh, anyway, yeah, this has been episode 20 of Grim Leftovers. And uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in, doing the chat, uh, listening, commenting, all the wonderful stuff. I'll have the blog up shortly because I basically have it already written. I just got to do a few little tricks here and there. Um, tomorrow is uh, Flash at at, at 1 p.m. Eastern uh, with In a Perfect World, probably with Vincent Easley, too. Uh, Grammy will not be here on Wednesday. Flash will be back on Thursday with his solo show, 20% off. And then uh, Friday is Vinny at 1 Eastern, uh, Grammy at her normal time, 7 Eastern, and myself and the Moose Girl at 11 p.m. Eastern with the Freakers Ball. Also, it's possible I will be doing an, a special interview show with a m- person that hangs out here at reallibertymedia.com if we work out the details on that. And, and so just be looking for that. Uh, that. That should be coming soon enough. Uh, I think that about covers it. Thank you all once again. Talk to you later. Peace.